So, I've got to cook for myself this week, and I've decided to make a bolognese sauce. So that's, you know, your standard, uh, you know, meat sauce, pasta sauce. Now, most people just think, okay, I'll take some, you know, beef and ground beef and a little bit of tomato, and we'll throw that on pasta, and it's good enough. But we're not most people, and today we're going to try to do this right. So what are we going to start with? We're going to start with veggies. Four carrots, two stalks of celery, got a yellow and a green zucchini, couple cloves, couple cloves of garlic, green pepper, pound of cremini mushrooms, two onions, and some Italian parsley. So let's, let's get these guys all prepped up. So, got my celery cleaned and cut into thin slices. This is a really nice dark green one. It's got a very pungent odor to it. It should add a lot of flavor. I'm gonna take my two garlic cloves and crush them. And then mince them and put them with the celery. And I'm gonna put the onions also with the celery. So we're gonna put the celery, the onion, the garlic, and uh, the green pepper in all at the very beginning and, and sweat them together. Now, the green pepper, you can put that in Italian, but it's, it's not typically in a European mirepoix, but it is in uh, Creole, so Louisiana style. And I like it a lot. The green pepper adds uh, a lot of bite. So here's the ingredients for the mirepoix. I'm gonna set those aside. The zucchini, I'm gonna cut up thinly sliced. It doesn't add a lot of flavor, but it adds some veg, and I think that's, in general, a good way to go about cooking for yourself. 
Same thing with the carrots. I'm gonna peel the carrots and slice them thin. So I've got my zucchini and carrots done. Now I'm gonna take my mushrooms and I got some fairly large ones. So I'm gonna cut them into quarters. These are cremini mushrooms, so they should keep their, uh, their texture throughout the, the cooking, I, I hope. And they're also gonna give a real nice meaty flavor. Lastly, I'm going to take the parsley and just shred it. Um, again, this would be better to put in at the end, but I'm going to be serving this to myself all through the week. So I'm just going to take and uh, put it in with the veg uh, to get kind of that nice uh, bitter flavor. So now we've got all of these veggies prepped to cook. And you know what goes really well with veggies? And what really likes veggies? Animals. So we gotta bring animals. And we're gonna start with some bacon. So I've got some bacon. This is a, a shoulder cut bacon. Should be nice and fatty. And we're gonna use this uh, with the mirepoix. So this is some nice, gorgeous bacon. Um, Smells great. I'm gonna cut this up into, uh, I took about maybe six slices and I'm gonna cut this up into about uh, one inch uh, pieces. And throw these one inch pieces in. In my Lodge a cast iron Dutch oven. Turn that up to about uh, medium low. Put in a little bit of uh, olive oil. And now I'm gonna put in the uh, aromatic veggies, the onion, pepper, and garlic, and uh, a big pinch of salt, maybe about a, just short of a tablespoon. And while we're at that, let's put in a little bit of a dried oregano. Again, maybe uh, two teaspoons and about two teaspoons of dried basil. A 
Okay, maybe closer to a tablespoon. Some ground black pepper. A little bit of red pepper. I've got um, this. It says crushed red pepper, but I, I dumped this out and I replaced it with uh, Aleppo pepper, which in my opinion stands head and shoulders above uh, cayenne any day. So we'll put in maybe, uh, how much? That's maybe a uh, half to one teaspoon of pepper. Smells excellent. I'm gonna cover this. I'm gonna try to sweat the veggie some. Uh, I've got the temperature a little bit higher than it needs to be, but that's because I'm also want to uh, get a little bit of browning on the bacon. So let's talk about what's going on next. So after so after I uh, get the aromatic veg and the uh, and the uh, bacon, uh, nice and crispy and, and uh, get those flavors in, I'm gonna put in some meat and brown that. Uh, well, first I'm gonna take out the, uh, take out the veg and the, uh, the bacon. So I'll scoop that out and try to leave the oil in. In this case, the, the oil is gonna be carrying the, the flavors and uh, use that to season the meat. Now for the meat, we already have bacon, and that's gonna be great. So, it seems to make sense that we continue with the pork theme, and we have, this is a pound of, of ground pork. And the ground pork is a little bit fatty, so to balance that out, I thought, well, we'll put some lean ground beef. So we'll have bacon, pork, beef, and uh, it seems like we're having an animal party, and uh, what's not a party without some lamb as well? So I've got a pound of, of lamb. So uh, that's maybe half a pound of bacon, a pound of, of uh, lean beef, a pound of ground pork, and a pound of ground lamb. So we're gonna put those in, uh, a little bit of salt, a little more spices, and uh, brown those after uh, we're done with the aromatics. After we're done with the aromatics and we've got the, the meat browned, then we return the aromatics and the bacon. We put in our veg, and then we put in some tomatoes. For the tomatoes, I got uh, about uh, two pounds of uh, San Marzano uh, whole tomatoes. These are the best. They are fantastic. And we'll put those in and we'll mix those with, uh, this is about 14 ounces of uh, crushed San Marzano as well. And that's gonna serve as, as our, our tomato base. Now, uh, tomato naturally says to me that we want some alcohol. So with the flavors that come in food, there are three fluids that serve to extract the flavors from the food. There's alcohol, there's water, and there's oil. In the case of tomato, the flavor of the tomato that gives you that rich umami, really meaty flavor, that comes out in alcohol. So what I've got here and it, it kind of looks chunky, but that, this is not the wine. This is uh, one cup of, of uh, a dry red wine and, and one cup of uh, chicken stock. So the chicken stock looks a little bit lumpy here, but uh, those two together are gonna uh, serve to uh, extract the flavors from the, from the uh, tomatoes and just kind of stew everything together. And then we let it sit and, and cook down for about an hour. 
as we get toward the end of the hour, we're gonna make some pasta. I got my favorite pasta. So for this week, I thought two pounds would be enough. I'm gonna be eating this stuff all week. You can, you know, we have three, four pounds, <laughs> pounds of meat. Uh, so I got uh, spaghetti rigatti. It's got these little fine little uh, channels on it, which it grabs the sauce really well. So we'll make some of that. And when we serve it, we're gonna serve it with bread. olives, and I also have some uh, artichoke cart, which they're left over from a previous meal, but I'll, I'll, I'll eat those too. And lastly, I didn't want to uh, have the danger of being hungry when I had this on the plate, so I also got some uh, Italian sausage, and I'm gonna uh, fry these uh, in, a, in a pan next to it so I don't have the sausage flavor in the sauce but I'll, I'll serve this on the side with it, and that will be a, a way of, of having a a uh, side sausage with my four types of, of meat. So here's our aromatic vegetables, and you can see we've got this wonderful juice that's coming out of them. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, and, and the, the veggies themselves are starting to turn a little bit, a little bit translucent. So we're going to... Uh, use a strainer to remove the, the veggies and the bacon and then put in our meats. Here are the uh, aromatic veggies and then the bacon and here are our uh, three types of meat I just put in. We'll uh, brown these and come back in a little bit. By the way, don't forget to uh, salt the meat key to having well-flavored food is to season throughout the cooking process. In particular, salt, you, you want to distribute evenly as, as you cook. The other herbs we can, we can add uh, also. The meat's looking good. We're getting some color on it. Uh, we've cooked off any liquid and uh, getting a little bit of browning. So let's uh, put in our tomatoes and uh, arrest the browning process. And now let's add the, the, the rest of the veg. So once I get this stirred in, we're gonna put the, the lid on and uh, get it up to temperature and then turn down the, uh, turn down the fire a little bit and try to cook this uh, probably one to two hours and until we uh, reduce it a little bit, uh, thicken the sauce, and uh, everything should be nicely homogenized. Uh, again, do remember to, to season and, and taste as go. So it's been about an hour. We've, we've cooked the sauce down by about uh, maybe 20%, uh, you know, one inch from the top. We've got hot water going and we've got the sausage going. So in about 20 minutes, the sausage should be done and we will be ready to eat. So there you have it. About uh, two hours of cooking, we've got a beautiful bolognese sauce, Italian sausage, uh, olives and artichoke hearts, some bread, a uh, dipping sauce of uh, olive oil, uh, Aleppo pepper, salt, and thyme. And we are all ready to eat.